Well, friends, I'm not used to reading um, remarks, but I'm getting old. And I'm nervous. And I'm going to do it. Um, first of all, I'd like to sincerely thank ACSB for giving me this wonderful award. And especially, I'd like to thank my nominators, Joe Green, Scott Campbell, and John Lerain. Um, many letter writers who wrote extraordinary letters that one day I would love to see. I think just I'll take a minute. Down. And by just my steadfast colleagues both at the University of Michigan and for uh, at Michigan State University, my friend Senior Kofold, who is here, reminds me that my best publishing years were actually at Michigan State University. <laughs> but what I'd written in it. That's in the one. Some of us came to the table of ACSP not sure that we belong to here. When I say ACSP, I mean, of course, teaching and researching in the field of urban regional planning and the collection of planning symbols that shelter such teachers and scholars. In general terms, many of us felt we did not belong at that table, whether because of our gender, our race, or ethnicity, or because of nationality, or international status, or sexual orientation, or social economic position. For myself, my feeling of not belonging was associated with being a woman of color, or more precisely, a black woman. Our profession seemed exclusionary limited to only certain types of favored people. Many of us who felt like outsiders often came from places that fell far short of providing living environments that allow human beings and their families to flourish. These were places that suffered exclusion by race, ethnicity, and socioeconomic status. These places range from rural areas or small towns where city and county leaders failed to serve black or Latino constituents, all the way to large cities where racial ghettos seemed designed to ensure that children and youth did not easily escape ghetto boundaries, or at least did not escape those boundaries with any regularity. These were also places where elite and they were classes of people sometimes misused professional urban planning to the disadvantage of those who were not so favored because of race, ethnicity, and income level. In some cases, such planning actions were well meaning but patently misguided or unjust, such as with inhumane site clearance, marginalization, or displacement. But sometimes deleterious planning actions were endemic and routinized and deceptively neutral, such as zoning or subdivision regulations with exclusionary effects. Because such practices tended to further injustice rather than rectify it, and making a seat at the table for all varieties of scholars and practicing planners, especially those who represented oppressed classes of people, became an important goal. This act of inclusion would give us a different perspective, a sensitivity to people living at the front end of planning decisions. For this and other reasons, furthering diversity within ACSP and its planning schools diversifying the faces and backgrounds of those seated at the academic table became an imperative. But what was the goal beyond sitting at the ACSP table? With this, we can all identify, no matter our gender, race, ethnicity, or other external identifier. We all wanted, surely, to belong to a profession and a field that made a positive difference in the lives of all people and the well-being of communities and the world at large. This beautiful ACSP table 
seated experts who knew how to transport people from one place to another with sensible connectivity or to create better neighborhoods and places where families could live in affordable housing. This beautiful ACSP table hosted faculty members who understood how to spur economic and community development so that people could feed their families. And likewise, this organization sheltered environmentalists who would help ensure fresh air and clean water so that all people could live and breathe. This is the brand of efforts that we wanted to join. These are the practitioners that we wanted to help train. That's the collectivity we wanted to be a part of a profession that helped nudge progress toward a better future for humanity, for all of humanity, or at least the parts that we could reach. As I look back over the last four decades, or maybe almost five, I'm happy to see that the ACSB table is now more diverse. We now have much more inclusion for women for people of color, for those with international origins and research, for more planning scholars of all kinds. We have initiated ACSP programs and provide scholarships and prizes that mentor doctoral students that promote interest groups for specific populations that address anti-black racism. The table holds a fuller array of people and research interests than it did 10 or 40 years ago. And ACSP has become a well-organized operation in many ways. That is, it mostly well-organized operation. And then, yeah. That is why I was particularly pleased to attend this year's ACSP 2023. I could see in the papers and presentations of scholars clear evidence of purposeful engagement with the world at large in ways that promise to improve the human condition. Yesterday, I heard one scholar talk about the real possibilities for meaningful participation for indigenous populations in British Columbia and the venture of planning. I heard another young scholar talk about collaborative work to allow Latinx populations to engage in participatory project to safeguard their neighborhood against the ravages of climate change. Yet another described a set of three papers that's actually one of the kiddos, her daughter, a set of three papers that shed much light on the resilience and challenges facing Puerto Rican communities. These space papers warmed my heart, gave me joy, offered assurance that the work of planning scholarship is valid. As I humbly accept this award, so lovely and so unexpected, I would like to leave you with just one message. We have called bar what we have so far to go. We have diversified the table and we have created an efflorescence of meaningful scholarship. We have trained in our training a dazzling array of young professionals and scholars. But as for the vision that drew us here, the vision of cities and regions and rural places characterized by wonderful living space for all. Places where people can transport themselves safely without warming the planet ever more. Or cities where they can afford to get from place to place in order to keep a job. Or neighborhoods where they can house their families and comfort and security. That is the vision that is still far away from the ambiting. We still need places where people can work with human dignity, where they can live in a way that encourages human flourishing, where communities can thrive, where those left outside of the nations or the world's bounty 
can overcome the strictures of racism and sexism and classism. That vision is still far away. And yet that vision must prevail. That vision should still drive us, motivate us, govern our actions in the classroom and in our own research and writing. Yes, the warm and comfortable table of ACSP is more diverse. Our conferences are beautiful and expansive, but our cities and regions still suffer from exclusion, from environmental degradation, from racism, from poverty. And so let us not be too comfortable at this lovely table with our own small reforms and innovations. Let us not be too self-satisfied in our tweaking of our profession and its impact. Let us always remember the main purpose for our existence, the constant need to focus on the well-being of our societies outside of the comfortable realm of our campuses. And so friends, I believe in the call to that vision of human betterment of social reform. And with thanks for allowing me to serve alongside you in this great adventure, the creation of our extraordinary, complex, visionary agenda.